ketogenic diets are becoming increasingly popular. A lot of people are talking about them. You may have been recommended one. You may already be eating a ketogenic diet. So in this video, we're going to explain exactly what a ketogenic diet is, the potential benefits and disadvantages, and how it applies to cyclists and how you can apply it. Can you be a competitive cyclist and eat a ketogenic diet? Well, before we go into any of that, make sure you subscribe to GCN if you haven't already and click the bell icon as this will give you a notification and it helps support the channel. Ketogenic diet, or keto for short, is a high fat, high protein, but low carbohydrate diet that's designed to put the body into a state of ketosis, where the body burns fat rather than carbohydrates for fuel. Put in a more scientific way, it's a metabolic state where the body breaks down fat into fatty acids and then into ketone bodies. Ketone bodies are acetone, acetoacetate, and beta-hydroxybutyrate, which are then used as fuel. Now, to achieve it requires very strict discipline, typically eating less than 50 grams of carbohydrate a day. There are many options and permutations to achieve this, but here, is an example of a typical daily diet. Breakfast could include eggs, bacon, and perhaps with some wilted spinach or avocado. Lunch could include a Caesar salad with chicken. No croutons though, they contain carbs. For a snack, some nuts, such as macadamias. And for dinner, grilled fish with some sauteed green vegetables. The vegetables consumed contain small amounts of carbs, but this isn't enough to push you out of ketosis. Foods that you'd avoid on a keto diet, well, that's pretty much all of the fun stuff. So bread, pasta, grains like rice and oats, cookies, croissants, even some fruit, chocolate, and beer. And well, little Timmy's birthday cake. Wait, no birthday cake? I mean, cutting out little Timmy's birthday cake seems rather drastic. Why would you want to go on a ketogenic diet? Well, there is undeniably strong evidence that a ketogenic diet is very effective for weight loss. Now, there are many motives for cyclists wanting to lose weight. It might be to improve your power to weight ratio for health reasons or to get leaner for aesthetic reasons. But it's important to point out that a ketogenic diet isn't a free license to eat as much as you want. A study in Nutrients from 2014 suggested that the main result of weight loss from a ketogenic diet still comes from a caloric deficit. There are potential health benefits too with medical conditions like diabetes. It's also been shown in some studies to restrict the growth of particular kinds of cancerous tumor, Alzheimer's, and it's long been used as a way to treat uh, epilepsy in children. But in many of these cases, studies are still ongoing and the results are far from conclusive. Importantly for cyclists, there's a train of thought that a keto diet can turn you into a fat adapted athlete that's better at burning fat and less reliant on carbohydrate as fuel, turning you into a fat burning machine with huge energy stores. Now, this works because humans can typically store between 1,600 and 2,200 calories of carbohydrate. But even very lean individuals still have over 100,000 calories of fat tucked away. I know, I mean, <laughs> hard to believe, I know, it's true. I guess that means I'm not allowed to eat any of this. Being able to tap into that fat and use it as an energy source by converting it into ketone bodies would effectively make an athlete 
bonk proof which is what typically happens when you're performing exercise and you run out of carbohydrates or blood glucose and have that feeling of hitting the wall. Factor in though, you may see misleading results early on with a ketogenic diet, typically two to four kilograms in the first week or so. Now this isn't muscle or fat loss that you've experienced, it's usually just water. And the reason for that is that your glycogen stores have been depleted, glycogen being how your body stores carbohydrate. Now to store each molecule of glycogen, the body also stores three to four molecules of water. So this loss is just less water in your body. Ketosis for athletes is a hot topic right now, and one that's fiercely contested on both sides. Now on both sides of the argument, you'll find people with motives and agendas to push. And I've tried to be as objective as possible when going through the scientific literature that currently exists on the topic. I don't have an ulterior motive or an agenda to push, but to be completely transparent, I will state that I've never tried a long-term ketogenic diet myself, yet. First up, a well-cited study in the Journal of Physiology by Burke et al. from 2017 found that low-carbohydrate, high-fat diets impaired exercise economy and negated performance benefits from intensified training in elite race walkers. Put more simply, the body uses around 20% more oxygen to liberate energy from fat as it does from carbohydrates, meaning that, well, fat is a less efficient fuel source. This is offset, though, by the huge amounts of fuel that fat provides. But ultimately, the take-home message from this study is that there wasn't an indication of enhanced performance from this diet. And further to this, having spoken to coaches and riders, I can tell you that no one is competing and racing in the Tour de France on a ketogenic diet. And this is because without carbohydrate stores or carbohydrate consumed during competition, you have very little fuel available for a process called anaerobic glycolysis. This is the body's metabolic shortcut that rapidly produces energy by partially burning carbohydrate. Think of it as your body's natural turbocharger and it kicks in and enables you to perform short high intensity efforts such as sprinting, attacking or getting up short sharp hills. Now to be crystal clear here an athlete in ketosis will still have small amounts of glucose for anaerobic glycolysis, the turbocharger. This is because the liver is capable of producing small amounts of glucose through a process called gluconogenesis. However, the amount of glucose available for the turbocharger, the amount of turbocharger fuel available, will be much, much less than an athlete who is competing while consuming carbs. I'm now going to go into a little bit of depth, so brace yourselves, nerd alert, but it'll help you understand things later on. Now, ketones can be converted into something called acetal coenzyme A, which is a fuel. And this is done by an aerobic process, that means involving oxygen, called beta oxidation. And this is done by little things called mitochondria inside the cells of your body. However, this isn't as quick as anaerobic glycolysis, the turbocharger. Burning ketones does have an added benefit of not producing one molecule of lactate for every one molecule of ketones burned, which you do get when you, you burn sugars. Now, lactate is associated with that buildup of, well, lactic acid burning in your muscles, but it's not all that bad because lactate is essentially partially broken down fuel and it can be recycled and then sort of chucked on the fire later on when you might need it. So. If you're going to be doing a high intensity crit race or a time trial or you're trying to go as fast as you can in a sportive with lots of hills in it, then carbohydrates are going to be required to get your full potential out of your body. However, if you're going to be doing a week long uh, event or a long 300 kilometer Ordax at a steady pace, then being able to utilize fat and put fat to good use could well be very beneficial. For weight loss though, it's as simple as just being in an energy deficit. You need to consume less energy 
than you burn in order to lose weight. And, well, not everyone wants to win the Tour de France or do a bike race. People have different motivations. So if your motivations to lose weight are for health or for aesthetic reasons, that's perfectly legitimate. And in that case, a ketogenic diet could well be worth trying. So how could cyclists integrate a ketogenic diet? Well, one solution could be to use it as part of a longer term training plan. So you'd have a block of low intensity training where you have a ketogenic diet in order to try and lose some weight, get leaner, improve your body composition and make race weight. And then this would be followed by a period of higher intensity training, perhaps some racing as well, where you're fueling that higher intensity period with carbohydrate. Basically for athletes in the northern hemisphere it would kind of make sense to do this in winter but proper peer-reviewed thorough studies into this kind of approach are limited at this stage and haven't really been done although anecdotally i'm aware that some professional cyclists have tried this in the world tour albeit with mixed results many pro cyclists do something called periodizing carbohydrate but this is completely different. It involves consuming carbohydrate and fuel when you really need it. So on hard training days where you're racing or doing lots of intervals and on rest days, not eating as much carbohydrate. So, well, today's a rest day for me. So I'm having a black coffee rather than a cappuccino. Periodizing carbohydrate in this way doesn't get you into a state of ketosis. In order to achieve that, you need to go very low carb for a long-term period and you only achieve ketosis after a few days doing it. Another potential advantage could come in the form of reduced gastric distress. Athletes often struggle with tummy issues when trying to eat enough in long endurance events, but becoming fat adapted would mean you wouldn't have to eat as much. So what about supplementing with ketones? Well, there's a lot of ketone supplements available on the market at the moment, and the technical term is exogenous ketones. And the idea here is that you consume some ready-made ketones rather than waiting for your body to get into ketosis and make the ketones for you. The theory behind this is that it provides the body with additional energy sources for fueling. You often hear figures quoted that humans can process between 60 and 90 grams of carbohydrate per hour. And by supplementing with ketones, you're providing an additional fuel source that's metabolized in a slightly different way. Now, I actually went into more detail on this in the GCN show a couple of weeks ago. So if you want to find out more about it, we'll include a link to that episode at the end of this one. Right, well, I hope you found this interesting and informative. And ultimately, I'm not saying keto diets are good or bad. Quite simply, there just hasn't been enough studies or evidence published on it yet to fully understand the, the benefits and limitations of it. And if your number one goal is losing weight or trying to get super lean rather than trying to win super high intensity bike races, then it could be well worth a go. And ketogenic diets is, is a massive subject and the science is ongoing. So if you like this kind of content, then give it a thumbs up, share and subscribe to GCN and let us know in the comments what you'd like to see us do in the future. And to see more information on exogenous ketone supplements and ketone esters, you can click down here. <laughs>